there's too much here. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is the famous Goose. You may have seen him on my Instagram, but you've probably never seen him on this YouTube channel. Goose is one of my best friends, also the store manager of Too Many Records. Say hi to the people. Hi, the people. We are doing a new segment called... Uh, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vinyl Intervention. Vinyl Intervention, where basically... This is kind of an homage to the old random picks series we used to do back in the day when it was just me and Sandy. This is going to be Goose going through my massive record collection and pulling out records at random, or at his choice, for me to then justify keeping. Um, it's going to really test my ability to know what he's pulling from my shelf and also have enough knowledge of it in my head to have him allow me to keep it in my collection. And if I don't keep it, it goes to the store. If I do keep it, it stays here. So... Excited to start this new segment. We've been talking about doing this for a while, and um, I don't know. Let's we'll see how it goes. I already, I already looked. You don't need this. <laughs> Avalanche, just since I left you. You have the box set. Okay, okay. Here's here's the deal with this. So, this is the uh, colored variant. This is blue vinyl, which is a beautiful color to match um, this iconic artwork that we actually have in the store. We have this art framed up. Uh, this is the multiple, it's four discs, right? It's a uh, four, yeah. four disc box set. The main reason I have this is specifically for the MF Doom version. Um, there's, there's a track that has an MF Doom verse on it. It's amazing. Which is why I said you need to keep that one. But the, but the blue is so, but you it's don't so need cool. the blue. You have the record and you have enough content from the record. But it's blue. All right, all right, I'll sell this in the shop. All right. Damn it. I'm so, already not liking how this is starting. <laughs> so you're lucky because I'm not going to pull the wildflower. That was going to do that second. <laughs> I'm not. Because there's two of those, right? Yeah, there are. What? You don't need two of them. One's the eight panel and one's the red. And now if I have the red, I have to keep the blue for the... Have a... All right. Get rid of your endless. <laughs> My friend goes your yeah, endless? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, computer? No, not okay, computer. <laughs> okay, okay. That was a knock you out. Oh, okay. This is funny. Uh, this is Robert Glasper, Black Radio 3. Uh, this is a record that Matt told me to keep. We listened to it and he was like, you should have this. You don't have a lot of stuff like this. This is a really good kind of uh, hip-hop record that has a lot of kind of like jazzy influences to it. A lot of great MCs um, on it throughout the whole record. I don't know it that well, though. Um, I don't know. Should I, should I sell it? Yeah. All right, fine. Look at us. We're making progress already. Two things out the shelf. Oh, you got rid of the other Childish Gambino. You told me to. You said I, I couldn't keep all the I You limited me to three variants of, of Because the Internet. <laughs> you said four was excessive. According to who? Oh, I'm stressed. I don't know what you're going to pick. I mean, I don't either. None of this is planned. We're not like, uh, we didn't talk about what he's pulling. This is all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't need this, do I? Bro. Okay, this is a uh, this is an unofficial copy of Mr. Thug Isolation. I have m many other copies of this record. So this is a bootleg. It's on colored vinyl. I think it's the only version of this record that's on colored vinyl, which is why I wanted to keep it. But it is unofficial, and I have a first press. I have a yellow. I lied. There's a yellow copy. I don't need this. Why do I have this? This is dumb. <laughs> three for three. Have I kept anything yet? Uh, no. You're I'm, being a good man. I'm a good man. Final intervention. Uh, this record's amazing. So this is, I think, this is the first Meters record? I think it is. Uh, yeah, but didn't we just have, like, an OG come through the shop? No, it wasn't an OG. Oh, okay. This is the reissue, and these are all cut by Kevin Gray, I believe. They're all fully analog. This is on yellow vinyl. Um, this is a great funk record, and their cover of Wichita Lineman's incredible. Yeah, I yeah, I can't. No, keeping this. It's fine. Get out of here! If I had an original, I would sell this one, but originals are not not cheap for that record, that's for sure. It's hard because I have the best collection in the world, right? How about this box set? <laughs> the, the, drug, <laughs> the drugs box set? Uh, Aaron Fraser introducing Aaron Fraser, Really, really solid kind of modern uh, funk soul record. Yeah, but I want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I just listened to the shop. Almost just dropped it. I just listened to this, the shop for the first time, and I really liked it. Also, the color's really pretty. I think it matches. It's like this really nice, like like pink, it's kind of like almost metallic marble. Um, this is my only Aaron Fraser record, so I think I'm gonna keep it. Judy Sill, Heart Food. <laughs> so uh, we had a original, was it an original press of this in the shop? Yeah. Uh, really beautiful folk record. Um, 
you know, I think that this era of folk, especially female folk, is extremely underrated, and I don't have enough of it in my collection. This is also a record that I could justify keeping because it is a special cut by Kevin Gray, the, the goat of mastering these days. Um, and it's 100% analog from, what is this label again? Intervention Records? Intervention, that's the name of this segment. Um, yeah, I gotta keep this because I have a nice turntable that can justify like an audio file press. You knew you weren't getting me with that one. Get rid of this pole jam. Never. I love that you can't even really see with the, because it's not lit up well what it is, but it's the coolest. Shout out to Andy Fisher, the goat. <laughs> Why would you give this to me? This is my only copy of this. This is Outkast's Equemini. This is one of the greatest 90s hip hop records of all time. And uh, this is on colored vinyl. It just came out, this repress, um, last year. Uh, it came out last year. When'd you get it? When, when it, it came, came out. out, yeah. Yeah, and it's still sealed? That is not because I don't want to listen to it. That's because I have too many records and I've heard this record enough times where it wasn't a priority spin. That doesn't mean I can't keep it. Like if you go by that logic, get rid of 90% of the stuff in this room right now. Like that's crazy. But when are you going to listen to it? That's the now, real question. Now that, that, that is the real question because look, I love Equemini. Now that you pulled this out, I'm going to listen to it tonight. Promise. Maybe. Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> you're, you're either promising, you're, you put the pinky in there. It's a right? long record, man. Can I bring it to the shop to listen to? Sure. Okay, we're going to listen to this in the shop sure. today. Beautiful. That sounds like fun. Yeah, I can't not keep... Like, there's no Outcast record I would I would get rid of. Um, like, it's just... That's that's a... It, the only Outcast record I don't own, I believe, is Idlewild. Okay, I see what you're doing here. You're really hitting me with the Gambino stuff. Okay, so... This is the official release of Gambino's Kawaii, which came out on, uh, I think it was like a record store day or Black Friday. And they did a random insertion of either blue, yellow, or split. And I got lucky and I got the split, which is super cool. So first of all, I love the aesthetic aspect of it. Now, I always say in my videos, if there's an official release of something and I have a bootleg, I'm gonna get rid of the bootleg. However, this didn't come with the STN MTN um, mixtape that also comes on the bootleg. So yes, I have the official Kawaii songs, but I don't have these songs. So I have to keep both because, um, I mean, technically I guess I don't have to keep this Kawaii, but it is official. And if I want to go by my own l metric of trying to support the artist, then I have to keep it. You bought it from the artist's website direct from them, right? I mean, I so, got it or, from- Well, you got it from a distributor possibly, right? right? Okay, cool. So you have supported the artist as best as you can. Why don't we figure out which one sounds better? And then... We know it's going to be the official, though, probably. But maybe not. But maybe not. All right, we'll bring them both to the shop and we'll do a shootout. All right, <laughs> good call. Fine. That's true, because if they do sound equivalent, I did pay the artist. That's actually a relief. I never thought about that. I, I have done my part in supporting the artist, and, and then I only need to keep one copy. That's... But I love the split of the variant, but whatever. All right, it's fine. You have to realize I'm, I'm so big onto aesthetics, too. Like, the... I get it, but... Like, vinyl to me is an art form, and that's part of the reason I could justify it. I 100% understand. However, like, you have so much stuff that they don't fit in your shelves. That's a reality. Just need more shelves. Need the second house. One of these. No, come on, man. Cooking Soul? All right. All of these Cook and Soul records are amazing. He's one of the best producers to be doing it right now, and every release of his is just absolute fire. They all sell out, so if you don't get them, they're like impossible to find after the fact. And every one of them is good. Uh, lots of great features on them, lots of great beats. Uh, they're all different records, so it's not like I can say, oh, I only need X amount of Cook and Soul records. I feel like um, he's in my top 10, maybe top five producers these days, so I think I'm gonna keep all of these. But they are still sealed, so if I do spin them and they don't hit the way I think they will, then I will obviously sell. You know? Yeah. I have to convince him. I'm trying my best. It's the caretaker. This is the... What's the name of this record? Is this like an Empty Bliss, whatever that record is? Yeah. Um, yeah, an empty, I think it's called an Empty Bliss. There's like a longer title than that. Yeah. yeah. This is an ambient record uh, by the caretaker, who famously is known for the... Um, I almost said everything everywhere all at once. No, it's everywhere at the end of time. Everything at the end of time. It's a six part series about, that's basically like like about dementia where it's like the, the tape is slowly degrading over the six parts and it's a, like an ambient modern classical piece that's really fragile. And there's a ton of YouTube videos like dissecting the entire project. Um, this is one of his uh, releases that is not part of this. And honestly, 
I don't know if I could justify keeping it because I've never listened to it. I think I just got it because I like the caretaker. It's great. Let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of it. Okay. We need to get rid of more stuff. Start picking bad records from my collection. Uh, Good luck. Uh, How often do you get to come look at my collection? Uh, I mean, any every time that I've been here. But it, that's not that frequently. It's not that frequently, but I've been here a lot. Yeah. Just, it's, we've known each other for a while. It's true. I feel like this room, I just, this is such a good, like, it's weirdly private. Like, nobody comes in here except for me. <laughs> Are you joking? I come in here when you're not home. Huh? What? 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 Do you think we should A-B test the avalanches? No, because I've done that already. And the 4LP sounds good? It sounds great. Okay. Why would they do a deluxe and not do a color? That's that's what, that's what bothers me. Get rid of your Rufus Wainwright. <laughs> Get rid of my Rufus Wainwright? What are you, out of your mind? And that way I can have it. Oh, I see what... See, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a motivating factor to what you're doing here. <laughs> He's just trying to pull... Are you going to buy my avalanches? <laughs> <laughs> no. If I was going to buy your avalanches, I would have bought the 12-inch single that you have. DJ Shadow, live in Manchester, the Mountain Has Fallen tour. It's an interesting set that DJ Shadow pulled together of a bunch of songs from his career through The Mountain Has... Uh, the Mountain Will Fall? What, what, what the Mountain that? Will Fall. The Mountain Will Fall, is that the name of the record? Yeah. It's early stuff from like introducing through that and he, he what DJ Shadow does live is he mashes up his own songs basically into like new configurations. And this is a pretty solid performance from 2017. Also, I got it signed from him in person. You have so much DJ Shadow. I do have a lot of DJ Shadow, but do you think that this is one of them that I should get rid of? I mean, I don't know this live performance. So, so we should listen to it at the store and decide if it's worth keeping. Okay, that sounds good. Great. No, I'm not getting rid of this. This is Girl Talk. This is Feed the Animals. This record's amazing. This is the top three mashup records ever. Get out of here. Didn't they repress this? That is the repress. Aww. Get out of my girl talk section. <laughs> I mean, feel free to tell the people that it's this is this is a really tough job just because this is such like an A1, you know, top tier record collection, you know? <laughs> feel free to share your thoughts okay, on that. I, I'll, I'll figure out how I want to share my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. Is this just a, is this a repress? Yeah. Just a repress of Kind of Blue? Is it like any special one? <laughs> Hold on, look on the back. 2010? Um, I need to think. That's a, like a tone poet. No, this is just like a random. And you know what? Here's my hot take. I'm really not a big jazz guy, and I struggle with every Miles Davis record I listen to. I think it's just for me, it's not what I look for. I, I obviously know he's like extremely talented, um, and so are the players on here, like John Coltrane, Bill Evans. It's pretty pretty stacked lineup. This is considered one of the best jazz records of all time. I think I have it just because of that. I don't think I would listen to it. I mean, like I have other jazz records in this vein that I would probably put on before this, so I'll probably be fine selling this. Why do I have this? Yeah. Gabor Sabo Dreams? Because it's one of the best records ever. You have an OG. Yeah, that's true. But this is a triple A cut. So is the OG. Yeah. It has a gatefold. So does the OG. This is one of my favorite jazz records. This um, amazing, amazing guitar work. Really magical. Um, but yeah, I guess I don't need the vinyl me please and an original. I guess that's what we call hoarding. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll sell this. Ah, I mean, Ichiko Aoba, huh? get your hands off get my hands. Ichiko Aoba. I'll beat the crap out of you. Ryuchi Sakamoto playing the piano. So, um, this record was going for crazy money and they repressed it and the repress even costs quite a bit. But I wanna be honest with you, I listened to it and I enjoyed the music, but the pressing kind of left something to be desired. It was kind of noisy and I think that was the consensus on Discogs too. I think I just kept it because I paid so much for it. And I was like, I feel like I should keep this because of that. Uh, but I wasn't super impressed with the pressing and truth be told, I also don't know when I would play this. Sorry, Ryuchi. Where are you going? You're going into the annex? Yeah. There's a hallway outside of this room that has, I don't know, how many records do you say that is? Uh, about 400. Oh, cool. Very cool. I'm gonna pull your National Cherry Tree Volume 2. You better not. I'm gonna touch it. You better not. I'm gonna touch 
touching it right now. <laughs> Get your hands off it. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time getting me to part with any of my national records, I'll tell you that much. All right, we have seven keeps, seven get rid ofs, a couple maybes. We're gonna pull one more just one for, this, for this episode. So make it a good one, Matt. Really try to get rid of a record for me. Okay. You know, honestly, this is pretty difficult. There's a lot of really great records here. And more so is that I spend so much time with Matt that I have a really good idea of what you like and what you'll listen to on your day to day. And what you may like just want because you want it. Mm -hmm. So it's hard, you know, to find the, the right balance of what needs to go and what should stay. Because I'm not just going to pull everything. Sure. I'm not going to pull your weather vanes by freelance whales. I know you want to. F. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you would say this is the best record collection you've ever seen? Um, you know, would you say maybe in that realm? Best I would say that this is a really great record collection. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, man, this is so good. You know I'm not going to get rid of this. This is Peter Gabriel, Scratch My Back and All Scratch Yours. This is Peter Gabriel covering all kinds of incredible artists. He covers, like, David Byrne, Bon Iver, Regina Spector, like, Arcade Fire, um, Lou Reed, Paul Simon, and then they cover his songs. It's exceptional. His covers of some of these, like, more modern songs. Um, when do you see yourself spinning it, though? Oh, I definitely would would spin this. I, here's the what? thing. Will. You have, Will. You have... 4,000 records. Where's the, the pile of stuff to listen to right now? How many records are in there? A lot. I don't have any other Peter Gabriel in my collection. Do you really not have Us? I don't have Us. Oh. So I need to have at least one Peter Gabriel record. And this you is... said so right after Us. So. <laughs> Intentional. Um, yeah, I think I gotta keep this. All right. I think, you know, it, I mean, you, you know that's an amazing record. I know, but I want it, so... <laughs> you gotta stop just taking records you want from my collection. No. So that was our final one. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, a basically a half and half split, which I think for the first episode is pretty, pretty good. Best you can ask for. At least I didn't just justify all of them like a crazy person. If you liked this segment, please uh, leave a comment below with your thoughts. And also, if you think of ways that we can improve it or do another spin or things you'd like to see in future installments of this, let us know as well, because this is a, you know, our, we've been talking about this for a while and we're kind of taking a crack at it. Um, it can obviously morph as time goes on. So uh, look forward to hearing your thoughts about Vinyl Intervention down below. Thank you, Goose, for coming and, uh, you know, trying your best to help me get rid of some records. And if you guys like this, there'll be more coming soon. Take it easy.